Taiwan is once again stepping firmly into the centre of a global debate that touches technology, geopolitics, security, economics and the future of artificial intelligence. At the heart of that debate is one question. Where will the world's most advanced semiconductors, chips that power everything from smartphones to missile defence systems to AI supercomputers, continue to be produced? Taiwan's Deputy Foreign Minister, Francois Chichung Wu, has given the clearest answer yet, insisting that the island intends to keep the cutting edge of chip making firmly on its own soil. His message is both a reassurance and a warning, delivered at a moment when Taiwan faces enormous pressure from Beijing and growing expectations from its partners around the world. In his conversation with AFP, Wu described the essence of Taiwan's strategy. He said, We will try to maintain the most advanced technology in Taiwan, and to be sure that Taiwan continues to play the indispensable role in the ecosystem of the semiconductor. His phrasing, indispensable role, is telling. Taiwan doesn't simply want to remain relevant. It wants to remain the anchor of a global industry that cannot function without it. This outlook reflects not only Taiwan's technological capability, but also its geopolitical calculation. If the world depends on Taiwanese chips, then the world must care deeply about Taiwan's stability. Today, Taiwan produces more than half of all the chips on Earth, and nearly all of the most advanced ones used in artificial intelligence, quantum research, 5G systems, advanced medical equipment, and next-generation weapons platforms. These chips are so complex that building one requires thousands of steps, highly specialised materials, vast clean room facilities, and a degree of precision that rivals space engineering. Taiwan's leading foundries have developed a kind of mastery that no other nation has fully replicated. And as geopolitical tensions escalate, that mastery has become a strategic shield. Yet Taiwan is not presenting itself as a fortress. Wu emphasised that Taiwan's growth strategy is outward-looking. He explained, Step by step, we enlarge our investment in the world, but still linking with Taiwan. What he underscores here is that Taiwan is expanding semiconductor facilities abroad, in Japan, in the United States, and in parts of Europe. But those expansions do not replace Taiwan. They reinforce it. Global partners gain access to Taiwanese expertise and manufacturing capacity. But Taiwan keeps the world's most advanced processes at home. Wu pushed back against the idea that Taiwan is being hollowed out or pressured to move its heartland tech abroad. He stressed, I think it's not, again, to try to empty what we are doing here and thinking that we are de-risking, just because the demand is growing. In other words, the global expansion of Taiwanese chip companies is not a retreat. It is the natural growth of an industry that the world increasingly relies on. But the heart of Wu's message is about more than supply chains. It is about the perilous strategic environment surrounding Taiwan. The island is under constant military pressure from China, which views it as part of its own territory. Chinese jets and ships frequently cross or approach the median line of the Taiwan Strait. Military drills have become routine, often simulating blockades or invasion scenarios. This pressure puts Taiwan's semiconductor dominance in a uniquely dangerous position. The world depends on Taiwan, but China believes Taiwan belongs to it. And the United States, Taiwan's top security partner, believes its own national interest is tied to keeping Taiwan free. Wu broadened the conversation beyond industry and technology when he said, it is getting a very important international cooperation. So to de-risk, the best way is still to prevent the war. We need the international community on our side to prevent the war. These words reflect a sober reality. No amount of chip manufacturing, foreign investment or industrial expansion can protect Taiwan if the political environment collapses into conflict. Taiwan's security is not just a domestic or bilateral matter. It is global. And Wu's emphasis on international community points to a growing recognition that preserving stability in East Asia is essential to the world's technological future. At the same time, he acknowledged that Taiwan's role in the US-China relationship might become even more central under President Donald Trump. His diplomatic assessment was direct. I think Donald Trump understands better and better, day by day, the strategic importance of Taiwan with China and will defend the American interests with his own way. Wu's confidence in Trump's approach highlights how Taiwan sees American support, not just militarily, but economically and technologically, as critical to maintaining its position. He went further, stating, I am very confident that, especially for Donald Trump, how he will defend the US interests, and based on this logic, I think Taiwan remains something, have a very important strategic role for the US, 
The message is unmistakable. Taiwan knows it is a core interest not only for China, but also for the United States. And that dual centrality, being at the centre of two great powers' strategic visions, is both a source of leverage and a source of danger. Taiwan's chip dominance gives it global visibility at a time when supply chains are being reconfigured. Alliances are shifting, and countries everywhere are racing to secure advanced technologies. Many governments today see semiconductor resilience as a matter of national security. They worry that a conflict in the Taiwan Strait could spark the greatest supply chain crisis in modern history, one that would cripple global tech production, disrupt financial markets, and freeze progress in industries that depend on advanced logic chips. For Taiwan, this concern becomes geopolitical capital. But Wu's remarks reveal that Taiwan does not believe dependency alone is enough. It believes that engagement, cooperation and diplomacy remain essential. Even as Taiwan strengthens its own defences, investing in asymmetric capabilities, upgrading its early warning systems and working closely with partners like Japan and the United States, it is also emphasising that preventing war is the most important form of de-risking. In this context, Taiwan is arguing that the international community must do more to deter aggression, not simply diversify supply chains. This is a moment in which Taiwan's strategy intersects with the global race for technological supremacy. Countries like the United States, Japan, the Netherlands and South Korea are building new semiconductor partnerships, enacting export controls and forming security compacts that tie technology to national defence. China, meanwhile, is investing billions in its own chip sector, determined to reduce reliance on foreign suppliers and ultimately challenge Taiwan's dominance. Taiwan stands at the crossroads of these competing ambitions. In the broader context of the Indo-Pacific, Taiwan's statements also reflect a deeper understanding of how strategic interdependence works. Security is tied to technology and technology is tied to alliances. For Taiwan, keeping the most advanced chip production at home is not only an economic decision, it is a deterrence mechanism. It makes Taiwan too essential to be ignored, too important to be sacrificed and too valuable to be isolated. At the same time, expanding investments abroad allows Taiwan to embed itself more deeply into the economic and technological frameworks of its partners. This dual strategy, home retention and global engagement, is the balancing act that defines Taiwan's current foreign policy. Wu's remarks to AFE make that balance visible. On one hand, Taiwan asserts ownership over the world's most advanced manufacturing capabilities. On the other, it acknowledges that real security comes from collective action diplomatic partnerships and clear commitments from democratic allies. As the semiconductor industry transforms, Taiwan is attempting to shape not only its own future, but the global future of digital infrastructure. Every new generation of chips requires more precision, more research, more international cooperation and more technical mastery. Taiwan is signalling that it intends to stay ahead and that it expects the world to understand the importance of keeping its role intact. Yet the message carries an underlying urgency. The technology race is intensifying. Military tensions continue to rise. And the economic stakes have never been higher. The future of the semiconductor industry and the stability of the Indo-Pacific may depend on whether the international community chooses engagement over escalation. Wu's final point captures this reality. Taiwan is a core interest of both China and the United States. Its fate, therefore, sits at the intersection of the world's most consequential geopolitical rivalry. But Taiwan is not presenting itself as a passive object of great power competition. It is positioning itself as an active, indispensable contributor to a shared technological future. The island is declaring its intention to remain the global centre of semiconductor excellence. It is insisting that the most advanced technologies stay rooted at home. And it is calling on the world to recognise that the best strategy for stability is not confrontation, but collective efforts to prevent conflict. Taiwan's message is clear. The world needs its chips, and Taiwan needs the world's support to keep producing them.